Hello viewers, I'm Veronica van der Kamp. We are the Helios Research Location. Today I have the privilege to talk to one of the team of Helios. This is just a follow-up discussion about the interview that we've had previously. I think most of you have seen it on televisions. We've made a lot of noise on the radios and we are not going back to tell you again what Helios is all about but this is a follow-up because people have started getting their first letters and there are a lot of questions that has come up. I have here with me Linda Boatin and I will allow her to tell us a bit about herself and the role she's playing in the Helios research. Linda, you are welcome. Hello, thank you mom. Thank you for visiting us today. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Hello viewers, I'm Linda Boatin as um, Madam Veronica Van Akam just said. I'm um, a junior researcher in the Helios team and I'm for now I'm assisting with communication, helping my colleague to communicate the Helios message to the Ghanaian community so that people would be encouraged to participate. Okay. Well Linda, um, I think people have started uh, receiving their first letters mm -hmm. and um, yeah, people are getting a bit confused what to do when they get the first letter. So you can explain to us how we should react to our letters. Yeah. Um, when you get the first letter, the first letter is your first is your invitation to the study. So um, as a participant who is invited, you you will see the, the letter has a form which which we are requiring you to complete and send it back to us. The form only requires you to fill in with your telephone number. There are two columns. If you have a phone number and a mobile number, then you could also indicate at what times in the day you are available for us to phone you. You don't need to put your name because we have your name also on this response form. And we've provided a postage free uh, um, envelope which you can return and put it in any street post. Okay, yeah. talking about the telephone number, because somebody met me and she said, yeah, she feels she was so enthusiastic about mm -hmm. the letter, but she felt everything and forgot the telephone number. So what happens if the person doesn't put the number on it? Yeah, um, when we receive this form, even without the telephone number, we make an appointment for you. This is an automated, generated appointment. We make an appointment for you and then with that appointment, we send you a confirmation letter. This appointment is for you to come to the research location, that is for the physical examination. We assume that you would accept that date. So when you receive this confirmation letter of the date for this physical examination and you are not convenient with it, you phone us with a telephone number and then we can arrange the uh, the convenient date for you so by phoning us we get your mobile number then otherwise this is another step otherwise when we have received your um, letter without your telephone number sometimes we also send a herring and we send a, a reminder letter and this letter you would have a form also again to complete with your right telephone number. So it means it's yeah. very, very important to put the telephone number very, on it. Very if important. you don't, mm -hmm. then the secretariat is just going to give you a date. Yes. But when you put it on, you can negotiate and find a date that is suitable for you to come. Then it's also more easier. Yes, exactly. Because mm -hmm. when we get your telephone number, we phone you and we arrange a convenient date yeah, for you. So you okay. choose the date and time you want to come to okay. the physical exam. So viewers, say the man from a telephone number and one fan to swa not just all my be my date. If they are not in favor, into my mama you ring for phone number and to so. Okay. So you receive the letter. You react and you wait for the date for the appointment to do your physical examination. Okay, there's something about this questionnaire. Do you send it together with the first letter or how does that also um, work? Okay, yeah, um, the first letter, like I mentioned earlier, is your first inv invitation. Um, the questionnaire comes after we have received uh, your response form and have made an appointment for you to come to the research location which 
we call Yekana for Yekana say a clinic. That's where yeah. we come for the physical examination. And when that phone call is made to you, we then send you your questionnaire. So your questionnaire follows after we have contacted you for an appointment to the research location. And with the previous interview also, it said that um, when you are, when they phone you, mm -hmm. then they'll ask you if you need help with filling of the forms. So it means also if you don't put your phone number on it, then they don't know whether you need help for it or not. So with that, you just send the questionnaire or you assume that the person will fill it online. Um, yeah, let me um, make this a bit clearer. When we phone you, we first ask you, would you be able to, f to complete the questionnaire by yourself? If you say yes, then we ask you, there are two ways to complete the questionnaire. There is an online form and there is a, a paper form which we post to you. And this, when you respond that you want to do it by yourself uh, online, we give you an in-log code. You do it online at your own convenience. Otherwise, if you choose the paper questionnaire, we send that one to you by post. And this one, you are required to try to complete it before coming to the research location for your physical examination. But during this phone call that we do, we call for you, you can also ask for help. We have trained interviewers who are mostly our own Ghanaian youth in the community who will go, who will come to your home at your convenient time to help you complete this questionnaire. Okay, that is very clear. Now let's move on to the second letter. How soon do you get the second letter after yeah. you reacted? Yeah, the second letter is your confirmation to the research location that is for your physical examination. The second letter comes in as soon as we have received your response form and then have called you and have arranged for the date for you to come to the physical uh, examination. So your second letter follows almost immediately. A um, okay, week. Um, maximum within two weeks. two weeks yes because as soon as we have phoned you then your date has been confirmed so we only send you a letter to confirm that your appointment um, is on this date at this time at this and then we give you directions also uh, in that second letter apart from the confirmation letter we give you directions your check point because we've already had complaints but it's not on the amc uh, the normal amc exit the nimono it's on the other side that is if you are coming from the belma station with the metro you take the last coach and then you take you, you take the exit from the last coach then out of the of the metro, it's on your right side. That is New Land Hof two one five. And if you are coming with a car, to we've given instruction, uh, sorry, directions in that confirmation letter. Plus things you need to come with. The usual direction is that when you get down from the metro station, when you take the stairs downstairs, it's on your right side. There are two exits from the metro. It's on your right side. And the, the building is easily uh, recognized. You, it, it looks like a triangle. You see it. It's uh, um, um, the Kesantai Centrum for Holy Dread Note. So you easily notice it. Notice it. Yes. Okay. Now, um, can you also tell us again what things you need to bring with you when you come to visit the um, clinic for your physical examination. Because most of the time, yeah, we forget some of the things. So if you can, please let us know. Yeah, um, what we require from you when you're coming to the research location, which is very most important, is for you to come fasted. That is, you don't eat anything after 10 p.m. the previous night. So when you're coming, you have not eaten anything, especially food or any drink. Maybe water is fine. And then, so when you come fasted, after the, research, uh, after the physical examination, we give you something to eat. And then you have to come with your, your urine, your early morning urine, or your first morning urine in your own container. Um, the usual thing we do for the lab is uh, you come with your, mor uh, your morning urine for the lab. And then um, you only come with a letter which shows that this is a confirmation letter with your appointment and 
that is all because we we have all your information so once we see your letter then we know that um the founder come is here and oh, then we yeah. can start these are also important uh, in the letter we indicated for you to come with your your uh, second phones card mm -hmm. then you have to come with the details of your house doctor so that um, your results can also be sent to your house doctor talking about the results after the examination how soon do you get the results and is it also that when everything is okay with you do they still tell you or they just inform you only when there's something wrong or there's something alarming? Yeah, we do send uh, results for your physical examination between six to eight weeks after you've been here. And uh, your results will be sent anyway, whether your results are okay or not, whether you had low values or not. Once you have been to the physical examination, your results will be sent to you and your GP as well. Okay, and I know you can also recommend some family members because sometimes um, there's a family that was arguing that the man said I'm paying the bills and mm -hmm. how come that is only my wife or... So, yeah, the recommendation of family members, if you can explain that part also a bit. Um, yeah, um, when we send you the confirmation letter, which is your second letter to come to the research location, we include the form, family relations form. And on that form, there are columns for six names to be filled in. Oh, okay. But we invite three family members. And family members here, we include parents, we include children, that is children from 18 years and above to 70, and then we include siblings. But Helios is focused more on a generational, uh, we want to look more on a generational. So if you are a mom and you got the invitation first and you wrote down names of your husband and your children, we are more interested in looking at the generation. So we might invite the earliest child the eldest child, then we might also invite your husband, up to three family members. Hmm. Why did you include Ghanaians in this research? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, because we, we it seems have... like, um, yeah, to us we think, ah, do they think that we are more sick than the other migrants? Yeah. Or we can, yeah. Not at all, actually, not at all. We've had these questions also in our church visits. Um, Ghanaians were included, healers like we've known now, healers is healthy life in an urban setting and healers is a study for the health of six different ethnic groups in Amsterdam. So we have the white Dutch, we have the Moroccans, we have the Turkish, then we have the Surinams, that is the Hindus, and then the Creole, the black people and Ghanaians, so that's six groups. The reason we included Ghanaians is because previously, just a while ago, in 2010, we did a study called the Gaia study, and this one involved just a little over 200 people. We had some facts about the health of Ghanaians, but it was not enough. We needed more insights into what is about the health of Ghanaians, about the, the things that we found, like increased high blood pressure, overweight, diabetes, and other things like that. So Ghanaians were included to have an in-depth of the findings from the Gaia study. And also because uh, with Helios, we, we, we are using the largest groups in Amsterdam. And Ghanaians among the West Africa, the Sub-Saharan African groups are the largest group in Amsterdam. So Ghanaians are included for the purpose of um, research funds and, and um, finances, it's important for us to use the largest groups. So it's not because generally Ghanaians are sicker or not healthier than any other group. I'm not at all. lucky to be part of it. It's, it's it actually a very good thing that we yeah. have been able be, to be included in. Yeah. And going through the examination, I think also what we have to let people know that because um, there's a lot to go through, you know. Um, what if there's a uh, part of the examination that somebody don't feel comfortable doing? Because you sign that you're going to do are you perplexed that that is it to do it? Mm -hmm. Or you can say no to other parts of the examination? Yeah, um, an individual has the option 
to choose which parts of the research um, or of the study or the physical examination he or she does not want to do. Um, if you choose not to have your blood pressure taken or you choose not to have your blood um, um, taken or you choose not to come with your urine. You've chosen some parts of the, of the study but we encourage that you participate in the whole um, physical examination so that for you you would have a general overview of your health. For instance if you choose not to have your blood pressure taken or uh, most people would say they are afraid of the needle so they choose not to have their blood taken then it means you are eliminating some aspects of your results, you wouldn't have results of those tests. Yeah, so it's better to go through all those that you don't go through it. You never know if it, there's something wrong. Exactly, there it's important it's... to okay. participate fully in the physical examination. Um, Linda, what if somebody is not able to make it on the appointment date? Maybe something came up and it's not possible. Does the person lose the chance of doing the physical examination? Um, not at all. Um, we we uh, we understand that because of work or some situations, you might not be able to come on your appointment time. We ask that you phone us. If you look at the letters we've sent, all of our contacts are there. You should phone the secretariat uh, at least one week before your appointment to the uh, physical examination, so that we can arrange with you a more convenient date. Um, we've already noticed that some people are not able to show up on the day of their, uh, their appointment for the physical examination. Uh, we would in the future want you to be able to phone us and inform us if you are not able to come on the day so that we can arrange another convenient time and day for you. So it's always possible, but we shouldn't do it often. But if it's really important, it's possible to change the date. Yes, it's always possible to change the date, but we encourage that you please phone us at least one week before okay. and not like the day we are expecting you in the morning and then you didn't show up. Um, yeah, about the urine. Mm -hmm. Why do people have to bring the urine from home? Can't you just have a sample when they are here in the morning to do it? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes even getting containers to put it in it's also very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for this question. Um, <clears throat> sorry, we um, we require your first morning urine, and this first morning urine, most times you will have it in your homes, and um, we require you to. The reason why we use the first morning urine because it's the one that has much of the content for uh, urine analysis. So that's why we use the first morning urine or the early morning urine. And for the issue of the containers, um, we realize it's not possible to, to post uh, containers for you at home because the containers we require cannot fit into the usual letter boxes. Yeah. And we couldn't have sent it to you in another way except by post. Um, you could use your own clean container you could find like a clean jam bottle or a water bottle very clean and put a sample of your urine in it or you could also ask your um, local pharmacy uh, for a container oh so they have empty containers that you can have it also from your house doctor and also from the apothec yeah there are containers Tennis. we oh, are okay. we really don't know if it's for sale or it's for free some okay. places are for free but um you could also ask them if you don't have a clean container at home okay. you could ask and those. something also came up somebody asked me also that uh, with the urine eh? mm -hmm. um he said early morning urine yeah. he said maybe she woke up around four o'clock mm -hmm. and can she bring something like that or it's maybe an hour or 30 minutes before she's sleeping home is what is really needed. Yeah, well, what we, know, what we call early morning urine, we know that some people wake up in the night to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to go to the, the toilet, but uh, what we require as early morning urine is usually the morning urine, you, you, the one you take before your, your daily activity starts. Oh, okay. 
yeah Most so the if one you, in the night yes if you woke <laughs> up in the night like 1 a.m to, yeah. to 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 urinate that is not what we because you slept maybe 10 o'clock and woke up several times in the night that yeah. is not early morning urine okay. the, the, the urine you have before you wake up okay. and start your daily activities okay that is the early morning urine. so Linda what happens if Ghanaians don't participate well in this helium study Hmm. And that's a very uh, good question. We've been encountering this question in most of our church visits. Um, what happens is that the founders or the organizers of our study would then think that Ghanaians are a bit difficult to reach for research. So maybe in future researches, we might not be included in future researches. But for the general uh, benefit of a researcher, as making of prevention programs, health information. Ghanaians are there. We, we are in the municipality, but for research, we might create a wrong message that we are, we are not cooperative with we research. We are not interested with okay. research. So maybe we might not be um, included in future researches. Maybe in 2015, something good might be coming and Someone might say, oh, in Helios, Ghanaians didn't really participate, so why would we want to include them? Well, it's very important it's that very we really... Important. But, I mean, it's very positive because people are even rushing and mm -hmm. waiting impatiently for their letters. What's your last word to the viewers? Yeah. First of all, thank you very much for having time to hear us on these questions. I hope that these are important questions for us and I've been able to answer some of all of your questions. Um, I would encourage participation. Mr. Sekana for you na ye be boy home what they say in your letter na ye be participating because by participation in numbers, then we have a general overview about the health of Ghanaians in Amsterdam. So that when there are decisions uh, taken about the health of people living in Amsterdam, we will not be excluded because it is important for us. It's important for, for the generation currently, for the generations that are coming up, especially ye mami be a ni in tisaya ye participate here. What we will find, if some wawa, it might help your child, it might help your, your grandchild. Into your best say, you need to participate in that. At least, you know, as an individual, and it's going to help your for you to have a general overview of your own health. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, be with us, Linda Boateng. Thank you very much for watching. This is Veronica van der Kamp, the ambassador and the face of Helios for the Ghanaian community. See you next time.